To switch from our mill module to turn module, you can just select the mill button on the machining browser or you can go up to RhinoCam and select turn. That'll switch the interface from milling to turning. And when you switch the interface to turning and when the turn browser is displayed, you will notice that the turn coordinate system is automatically established, which means that the world X coordinate is automatically mapped to your turn Z coordinate, which is basically your spin axis. And the world Y coordinates is being automatically transformed or mapped to the turn X coordinates. So as you can tell here, if I toggle the display of the world coordinate system off, you will notice that your coordinate system for turning is automatically established. So your top view or your XY plane of your design coordinate system or the world coordinate system is automatically transformed to your turn coordinate system. So the X axis of the world is your turn Z axis. The Y axis of your world is your turn X axis. Now for turning, you would define your part in a way so that your the back face of the part is oriented at the origin. So your part could be as simple as just a 2D geometry in here. So you could be creating like a simple profile of the part you'd like to program. So you basically want to make sure that the back face of the part is at the origin. I know that typically in turning applications, you would want to establish your zero to the rightmost face and that can be accomplished using work zero and turning and which I'm going to talk about in just a moment. But for your design, in terms of the designing the part or your design coordinate system, you need to make sure that the part is oriented in a way so that the back face of the part is at the oriented to the origin and it's in the, uh, you know, oriented. If you're just working off a 2D geometry like one of, uh, like a curve or a sketch, all you need is to have a sketch in the first quadrant. If the sketch is extending beyond the first quadrant, those areas would automatically be ignored or trimmed when you define your part for turning. So in this particular case, if I pick this curve, you will notice that it automatically creates the part. It's automatically revolved and the part is defined. And the back face of the part is at the origin. Now once you've established your stock material, the stock automatically is de determined based off the part. So I can go ahead and establish the radius and the length. And once this is established, you could establish your work zero. And this is where you can choose the work zero to be specified on your spin axis. You could choose set to stock and you could pick the rightmost face. It could be rightmost face of the stock or you can specify it to the rightmost face of the part and generate. So your work coordinate origin or the program zero in turning is established to the rightmost face. But when you design the part and orient it, you need to make sure it's established at the backmost face in here. Now, this would be similar also in SOLIDWORKS. We'll talk about how when we import a file and if it's in a different orientation, how we can easily orient the coordinate system for turning. So it's important to make sure that the back face of the part is in the origin. Now, if you had the drawing in here, and if the drawing was drawn where the frontmost face or the rightmost face at the origin, you will not be able to define this as a part. So you need to make sure that you transform it in a way so that the backmost face is placed at the origin and then you would be able to define the part and establish the work zero. Now I'm going to import a part in here into Rhino and we'll take a look at how we can establish the orientation and the coordinate system for turning. Now the steps that we are going to be performing for orienting the part in RhinoCam would be also similar in Visual CAD CAM as well. So here I have a part that was imported into Rhino and as you can tell by looking at the part, the part needs to be oriented so it needs to be rotated and also needs to be transformed so that the Z um, origin, the X and Z origin is at the back face of the part. So you could use the transformation tools that are available to you in Rhinoceros or you could even use the manipulator or the gumball tool to rotate the part. So in this particular step I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees first and then I need to establish the zero at the back face of the part. So again I'm going to select the part. I'm going to perform a transform and a move command. I'm going to snap to the center of the back face in here and then move it to origin. I'm going to type in zero and then press enter. 
So now the part is oriented for turning and as you can see the X and the Z axis is established at the back face and the Z is at the center of your spin axis. So once you've established this, you can define your part by selecting either surfaces or you can select curves and you can establish your stock and then the work zero. So your work zero in turning is typically set to the rightmost face or the front face and then you can establish this with your work coordinate offset. So this is how you'd be performing it in Visual CAD CAM and RhinoCAM.